70s, the vegetation in, in the whole Theredia Bluff area was becoming very degraded from uh, introduced words like Bidia Bush and Lantana. At the rate that it was degrading, uh, it's going to become a, a really major problem. So uh, I thought, well, there's things we can do to help this. Started in my street actually, uh, getting rid of Bidia Bush just along where the fire break is, and, and gradually just moved on to other areas. It was probably about one and a half kilometres of coastline involved now. Uh, to the south, there's a uh, land care group down at Cane Street. We've linked up with them through the back of the beach there, uh, through the sand dunes. The concept of the coastal corridor was born through the animals uh, need to migrate. You'll notice that a lot of birds and animals are moving along this long redhead bluff. There's a like nature reserve right around the edge of the cliff. So when they came to here, it was just bare paddock and uh, animals were very reluctant birds that, to go across clear ground because of, they're vulnerable to predators. There's a need to um, get some vegetation across this big area of, to link up the Wobbegal Nature Reserve with Belmont Wetlands down to the south so that there'd be a two-way movement of animals. I've seen present people walking along here a couple of times and also goannas, um, various lizards, diamond pythons. It's definitely working. A lot of birds travel along here, especially small wrens and honey eaters. It will become a, a critical uh, wildlife corridor in years to come, I think. We've had uh, numerous uh, high school students down here uh, over the years. It's been an ongoing event up to COVID. Also, uh, a lot of uh, local uh, residents have volunteered, and as well as that, we've had uh, land care green teams down here, and uh, a few other uh, business people, uh, girls from the body shop, have come down and help. GIO, a lot of community members have contributed to this over the years. You know, let's let's ensure the success. It first started just here. The planting was along here. 2010 to 2011, and the local coal mine actually dumped cheddar here, put some soil on it, put some grass on it, and that, that was how they left it. And uh, but we've improved on that by uh, getting some local native plants in here. You know, these restringer grow on the cliff up there naturally, as the, the wattle and uh, cashewinas, the local, grow around here. Quite a few other mainly low growing plants here. And a bit of natural regeneration happening. It's, a, it's good to be recognised uh, for these the achievements. Uh, but as I said before, um, I didn't do it all on my own. Um, so I'd like to thank uh, Lake Macquarie Landcare for their unwavering support over the years and uh, all the students and uh, volunteers that have helped make this corridor the reality. The, the, the benefit of this should go on indefinitely. It helps sustain our local animals and birds uh, into the future. There's a lot of blood, sweat and tears involved with it, <laughs> but uh, you, you get the satisfaction of, uh, it, of in the long run, of uh, seeing the, the trees growing and thriving. As one uh, local resident said this morning, that. There are a lot more birds around Redhead today than what there used to be years ago. You know, and that's a, an indicator that uh, we must be doing something right around here. That's the sort of thing that, that keeps you going. You know, you, you know that you're actually achieving something positive on the face of the earth. You know, and that's what I believe we're, we're here to do, is to look after the planet, you know, basically.